When we recently stopped by Prestige Motorsports for an engine build video, they happened to mention that they were also working on this giveaway engine for Holly's first ever intergalactic Ford Festival. So of course we hung around for that build too. By the time you see this, the giveaway engine will already be, well, you know, given away, but it's still awfully cool and worth a look. In fact, it may just be the ultimate stock block 5 liter pushrod Ford. Although it gives away inches to its bigger 351 cubic inch Windsor brother, the 5 liter Ford block, or the 302 as many may know it, is still very popular because the short deck height means it fits in a lot of different cars without having to cut up the hood or the shock towers. So that's what we're starting with here, a newer OEM 302 casting. These came out of Mustangs obviously, but also Ford Explorers, Mercury Capris and Mountaineers, and some other models. So the foundation for this build is a Ford 302 cast iron block with two bolt mains. Prestige is going to take this block absolutely as far as it can go by upping both the bore and stroke to bump the displacement up an additional 45 cubic inches, making this a 347. With the block's relatively low 8.206 deck height, we won't be able to squeeze in a ton of stroke. So the bores have to be punched out all the way to 4 inches 30 thousandths. A long throw crankshaft from SCAT was chosen because it bumps the stroke up from the stock 3 inches to 3 inches 400 thousandths. The OEM block limits our horsepower production because it can only handle about 500 reliably, so the SCAT crank is a cast unit. Forgings may be stronger, but a quality cast crank like this can handle 500 horsepower no problem. The camshaft is a custom grind from Comp Cams. It's a hydraulic roller with 243 and 249 degrees of duration at 50 thousandths lift on 110 degrees of lobe separation. Total valve lift with 1.6 to 1 ratio rockers is 568 thousandths for the intakes and 526 for the exhausts. Notice the notches that have needed to be cut into the bottom of the cylinder bores to create enough clearance for the big end of the rods as they swing past. For the rotating assembly, Prestige chose to go with a set of SCAT forged connecting rods and make them to eight SRP forged pistons. The pistons are a flat top design with cool asymmetrical coated slipper skirts to minimize parasitic drag against the cylinder walls. And they're also pretty lightweight at just 401 grams each. The SCAT rods are 4340 forged I-beams and they're 5.400 inches long. That's 310 thousandths longer than the stock 5090 rods, which will help maintain a decent rod stroke ratio with the stroker crank and minimize the chances of scuffing the cylinder walls. King bearings are used for both the rods and the mains. Shoving both extra stroke and longer rods into this engine is possible thanks to the short 1 inch 90 thousandths compression height on the SRP pistons. For reference, the stock compression height is an inch 600 thousandths. The Pro Seal ring set is from JE. They are 1.2 millimeters for the top ring and 1.5 for the second with a 3 millimeter oil ring. These lightweight, low friction ring sets were just recently considered for racing only, but now they're becoming more common in hot street engines like this. They do a great job of freeing up horsepower and with a proper home job on the cylinders, they've proven to last really well. Engine assembler Larry Broker makes one last pass to clean the cylinder bores and installs the pistons and rods into the block. The cap screws on the SCAT connecting rods are 8740 ARP bolts and they're torqued to 45 foot-pounds to get the proper amount of stretch. And with everything assembled, Broker makes a final check to make sure the rod bolts clear the bottom of the cylinder bores throughout 360 degrees of camshaft rotation. The deck of the block has been cut so that the pistons are even with the deck at top dead center. The 40,000 thick head gasket will create the squish area for proper mixture motion of the air fuel charge. 
Broker installs a high quality double row timing set to make sure that the valve timing remains accurate all the way through the power band. After all, we expect this engine to see a lot of revs. The bottom of the engine is sealed by a Champ oil pan. This is a front sump pan that would work well with older Mustangs that don't use a steering rack system. It's fully baffled to maintain oil control under high G turns and the kickouts on either side of the sump help increase oil capacity without harming ground clearance. To minimize the chances of sticking a lifter on startup, Broker lubricates the lifter boards with plenty of assembly lube. The lifters are hydraulic rollers that utilize dog bones to keep them from rotating in the bores. After the dog bones are properly positioned, a sheet metal spider is bolted down to make sure everything stays in place. By the way, because of the short deck, the lifters must be installed in a 302 block before the cylinder heads are bolted up. A 351 block is tall enough that you can usually fit the lifters in underneath the heads, but with the shorter 302 block, there simply isn't room. This is a later model 302 block, which you can identify because it has a one piece rear main seal. These later blocks have lower head bolt holes that extend into the water jackets. So broker makes sure to apply thread sealant to the bolt holes to prevent coolant from weeping out past the threads once the engine's running. A small screwdriver allows broker to apply the sealant without making a mess. By the way, older blocks don't require this step because the head bolt holes don't cut into the water jackets. And here's something that's pretty cool. This is one of the very first sets of Prestige's own cylinder head castings. These are permanent mold castings which create really high quality ports and combustion chambers. There will be a range of different heads for engine combinations, but these particular heads have 59cc chambers and 185cc intake ports. The valves are sized at 2 inches 20 thousandths for the intakes and 1 inch 600 for the exhaust. But here's Prestige Motorsports on Doug Aiken to give just a little more info on their new cylinder heads. So these, these new cylinder heads are what they call a permanent mold casting. So you have a sand casting and then permanent mold style casting. The permanent mold is going to be such quite a bit denser uh, as far as materials concerned. This is a 6061 aluminum. And uh, some other features about this cylinder head, it does use an 8mm valve, so we have a smaller valve stem. That helps enhance the flow of the cylinder head. And consistency is, is second to none. I mean, it's just, uh, it's fantastic. So for those of you that are looking for cylinder head and top end packages, you're going to find that we're going to roll out with that as well here in the near future. Just to be safe, Broker has also applied thread sealant to the head bolt threads. The sealant also acts like lubricant for proper torque. While he's at it, he's also applied assembly lube to the underside of the washers. The ARP head bolts are torqued down to 70 pounds in three stages. Controlling the valves are a set of nested springs with 175 pounds on the seat and approximately 425 pounds open. Chrome Molly retainers hold the springs in place with 10 degree super locks connecting the retainers to the valve stems. Connecting the lifters to the rocker arms are a set of comp cams high energy push rods. These are 5 16th diameter heat treated steel push rods and they're 6 inches 400 thousandths long to center the rocker arm tips over the valve stems. Next, Broker installs a set of Scorpion Racing 1.6 to 1 ratio aluminum roller rocker arms. These fit on 7 16 inch rocker arm studs from ARP. Since the lifters are hydraulic, there is no need to set the lash. Instead, Broker slowly tightens the adjuster nut until the lash is just taken up against the push rod. Then he tightens the adjuster an additional quarter turn and gives the lock a twist to set everything in place. Since this is a giveaway engine for Holley's Intergalactic Ford Fest, like we already mentioned, Prestige decided to go big with one of Holley's high ram fuel injected intake manifolds. 
As you can see with the top of the intake removed, the large runners provide practically a straight shot right into the intake ports. With a bead of silicone applied over the channel rails on the block, Broker gently sets the lower section of the high ram manifold in place and double checks to ensure that the manifold's intake runners, the intake gaskets, and the ports on the cylinder heads are all lined up properly. There are no gaskets to seal the upper and lower plenum portions of the intake manifold. Instead, an O-ring seals everything up with minimal fuss and no mess. Here, Broker glues the ends of the O-ring down inside the groove to make sure that it can't move and cause leaking issues down the line. We're powering this engine with a set of Holley 36 pound per hour fuel injectors. They plug right into the billet fuel rails and then everything gets bolted up to the intake manifold. Now the top section of the intake manifold gets dropped into place. The spark will be routed by a Holley dual sync distributor, which is designed to work specifically with these self-learning EFI systems. We were really impressed with the design of the high ram intake manifold here. You can actually get the distributor in its hole while the plenum top is bolted in place. That's pretty impressive. And there's also lots of clearance to adjust timing with the engine running. A set of MSD wires will send the spark to the plugs and a frostbite electric water pump was chosen to keep the coolant moving through the block. This pump is rated at 35 gallons per minute and you need a lot of flow with high horsepower engines making a lot of heat. Plus, it should save significant horsepower versus a traditional belt-driven pump. And here we have the Holly Billet throttle body. These throttle bodies are some of the most adjustable you can get, and even has what Holly calls a low RPM taper. That essentially improves low rim drivability without harming high RPM power. This is a 105 millimeter throttle body you see bolted up right now, but Prestige eventually swapped it out for a smaller 95 millimeter version on the dyno. Finally, the giveaway package will include a set of Hooker Super Competition long tube coated headers. But on the dyno, Prestige will be using their own dyno headers, which have inch and three quarter primary tubes and inch and seven eighths secondaries. When we got the engine up on the dyno, we asked Prestige's Aiken to make his prediction about how the high ram combined with EFI will affect performance with this package. This manifold likes to run really hard upstairs. So um, if you're looking for more of a street-oriented package, 6,000 and below, uh, Holly has a, a variety of different manifolds that we can choose from. And for those of you that are racers, uh, this is a pretty nice piece. This manifold really by design is, is really more about running higher in the RPM range, primarily because the size of the plenum and the length and, and size of the runner. Um, they do offer a different top for this as well. So for you carbureted guys, we can put two four barrel uh, carburetors on there, really good line of sight to the valve. Uh, so there's a couple of options for this manifold. Primarily, I would say this was designed around uh, turbocharged applications, but does work really well in uh, high RPM NA applications. So a benefit to EFI more and more these days because of fuel quality, we look at uh, you know, it's tunability, especially with the Holly HP, uh, but we, we don't have the cold start issues. We don't have vapor lock and boiling problems. So the EFI today is, is almost a must, uh, in our opinion, and Holly's electronics allow us to do basically anything. After giving the Holly HP self-learning engine management system time to dial in the fuel maps, we were able to start making pulls. And this little five liter definitely didn't disappoint.
Final results? Aiken was proven to be exactly right. This engine loves to run hard up top. The horsepower line climbs hard and it was still going when we finally pulled back on the throttle at 6600 RPM. Peak torque is 428.3 pound-feet at 5200 RPM and max horsepower is 512 and a half at 6600 RPM. And actually, it probably would have continued to make more power as the RPMs went on up, but the owner will probably want to consider making the red line right around 6,500 RPM because approximately 500 horsepower is all a stock block can safely handle for an extended period. Overall, I've got to say that we are extremely impressed by this 302 build. This is definitely going to be a high RPM screamer that's going to pull hard all the way through its mile wide power band. We'd love to see what a combo like this can do in a lightweight Fox body Mustang. Hey, thanks for watching.